At present, uh, we have three different drugs uh, which are approved and registered as first-line therapy in most of the countries. And uh, these drugs uh, are imatinib, and traditional imatinib, we can say, the dosage of 400 mg once a day, which was uh, registered already uh, 15 years ago. And then more recently, which means uh, seven and six years ago, there were two second generation TKIs uh, that were registered also as a possible first-line therapy and uh, these uh, are nilotinib at the dosage of 300 mg twice a day and dazatinib at the dosage of 100 mg once a day. Uh, both uh, second generation TKIs in comparative trials uh, which have been performed show uh, the achievement of a faster and deeper molecular response uh, in patients, in early chronic CML patients and uh, uh, what they also do is the impart uh, as a consequence of this they are able to suppress uh, some of the progressions that unfortunately are still observed in patients who are undergoing therapy with uh, imatinib particularly during the first uh, uh, one two years from the start of the therapy and uh, therefore uh, second generation tkis uh, are here attractive options for those patients who are at high risk of progression, like those who are classified as intermediate or high risk patients, and also in the cases in which uh, you would like to start as soon as possible a trial of discontinuation of the therapy. And we know that this is feasible for the patients who are uh, achieving a very deep molecular uh, response with uh, persistent for at least one, two years of time. And therefore, this is becoming a very attractive option, particularly for young patients, uh, even if they do not have or do not show particular risk of progression. I think that uh, certainly the primary goal of the therapy uh, will progressively move from, uh, I would say, continuous uh, treatment uh, based mainly on the overall survival results also the possibility to discontinue the treatment at some point. And uh, of course we are, uh, however, in doing this process, we have to, to put particular attention on what we cause in terms of uh, side effects, adverse events and so on. And also to the cost of the therapy because the number of the patients is progressively increasing. And therefore we must uh, uh, better tailor the treatment according to the patient's characteristics, so considering uh, of course uh, the efficacy that we want to achieve or the outcome that and the goal of the therapy and we have to consider the safety of the treatment uh, uh, not only safety but I would say also the quality of life which are uh, producing uh, in our patients uh, with the specific therapy and then we have to consider of course also the cost of the therapy per se.